welcome. Hello. Uh, this is issue four of our vlog. We hope you guys have been well. It's probably been about six weeks since our last one. Yeah. So, but we're yeah. back for number four. For sure we are. And what have you been doing in the last couple of weeks, Frankie? Oh, what have I been doing? You know, lots of knitting, mm -hmm. thinking about planting stuff. Oh, yeah. Managed to get some salad in the pots outside oh, our that's nice. place. That's um, really nice. But my cat's just becoming more and more adventurous, of course. We all know at the mill how naughty my cat. She's called Charlotte. She is a naughty girl. She's uh, bought in a live mouse the other day. Ooh. And uh, we've been slowly trying to herd it out of the door before the cat has it for dinner. <laughs> but we saved it last night. Hurrah. Yay! <laughs> so, released back to the wild. Very happy for her. <laughs> Yeah, our one does the same thing. They're or we'll just naughty. get these like little presents, like, and she's yeah. sort of she's doing like one a day or yeah. Well, I think it's because sp it's it's spring. spring is springing. Everything is springing. Definitely. There's so many more birds about at the moment. Yeah, it's beautiful, it's isn't fantastic. it? And all the wildflowers and stuff starting sure. to get really sure. vibrant yeah. and loud isn't it, it really is we're filming this in kind of end of march so maybe spring will be old news it's by true. the time it comes it's out true. <laughs> it'll probably be raining again yeah exactly april showers yeah definitely that's what they say right and we live in the wettest county don't we Probably. It UK, feels like it. <laughs> but at the moment, we're super excited about spring. And yeah. What yeah. have you been up to? What have I been up to? Just the usual kind of, you know, pottering. Like you, I've been doing some gardening. We have a little poly tunnel, mm. so I've got lots of seeds out. They'll and be ready then... to go by the time. This exactly. Comes up. Exactly. Well, hopefully, I've just planted lots of little radishes. Yum. And so, hopefully, by the time this comes out, I'll be there eating my radishes. You will. Are you going to pickle any or anything like that? That would be nice. I do like a pickle. Mm. Yeah. And then um, we've also started. I've been making lots of kimchi, mm. which is like Korean version of sauerkraut, kind of, yeah. with a little bit of chili in. Yeah. Nice. So that's probably going to be my like is that fermented? thing I do over the weekend. Yeah. You mix it all up and you put a bit of salt in as well. So then it ferments in like a good way, rather than a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I love it. It does smell a bit funny when you take the lid off. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's one of those things that if someone hasn't tried it before, they're a bit like, it's Ooh. quite like a, yeah, got to try it. And then you're oh. like, this is the best. Yeah, exactly. So that's so, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. Well, we'd love to hear what you guys are up to yeah, as well. Yeah, do tell us. And we hope you're all doing all right. I know it does sort of, at least in the end of March, it seems like an endless sort of, you know, deja vu a little bit. But hopefully things are kind the, of starting to wake up a little the bit. The weather's certainly helping this week. Yeah, definitely. But we hope you're good. And thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Um, so what we're going to be talking about this week yeah. is... We have got Alpaca Supreme. It's so gorgeous. Yeah. It's got to be like our most luxurious yarn. Yeah, like definitely. Definitely. And so if you have not seen already, the uh, colour palette has had a revamp um, from the gradients that it used to be mm -hmm. in the natural colours. So we've introduced some colour. And then the big news is we've got heavy lace coming. And that comes out this weekend. So if you're watching this, It'll be out already, which is brilliant news. We've been looking forward to it for a really long time. Yeah, lace, lacy yarn is so special. I think I've got such a love for delicate, holy things. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just like, it's soft as a cloud, isn't yeah. it? We'll show you all of these things close up. And then we've also got lots of scrummy samples. And then the other thing that's exciting about this weekend that, um, that you're watching is it is virtual wonder wall yeah wonder wall whales hello wonder wall hey. <laughs> um so it's our first virtual show of the year which is great yeah um and yeah we hope you know you're having a nice wonder wall however I, you're celebrating yeah and we have decided to do um 10 off for the weekend 
So that's grand. Great news. So you can save a little bit of pennies on either some Supreme or we've got oodles of um, limited edition top specials as well. John's oh, yeah. been busy whipping Love up some goodies. Love Wonderwall, he always does the best for, for yeah. the tops. Definitely. Yeah. I'll be missing the Scotch egg, so that's all I can think about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then there's like, yeah, there's like a cider man, the and there's the amazing like French patisserie, oh. and no the, bones Jones. Yeah, and the Polish pierogies. Oh yeah, they are nice yeah. as well. Unfortunately, no food this year. <laughs> food must be provided by yourself. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Welcome. I think we're going to kick it off by just telling you a little bit about uh, Alpaca Supreme and the blend um, and the different fibre compositions and then we'll walk you through all the colours. Yeah, definitely. For first off, I thought it would be good to just talk to you a little bit about what the blend is and then the camps um, and all of that fun stuff. We did a vlog last time all about different sheep breeds and blends and yeah, we had lots of good feedback on that, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, but Alpaca Supreme is a bit specialist um, in terms of the things we do, because as the name might imply, there's some alpaca in there. And then we've also got a bit of silk in there as well, 20% silk. So I didn't talk to you about either of them last time, so I thought that might be a nice little thing to start with. This guy I'm holding here is Alpaca and it's quite a nice long staple length. Um, I think the alpaca we get is about four or five and it can go all the way up to six or seven, I think. And it's a really fine fiber. Hopefully you can see the texture on that. And you can see as I'm pulling it off, it will kind of shed quite easily. Um, which means it can be a bit tricky to spin at the mill and you end up with like a sort of big cloud of alpaca fibre <laughs> around whichever machine is spinning it. Um, it's also actually, I keep calling it a fibre, that is technically incorrect. What is it, Frankie? A hair! It's a hair! So the reason it's a hair is because it's hollow. Um, you obviously can't tell that with the naked eye, um, but it is hollow. And the reason that that is great is because it means that um, warm air can be trapped inside each kind of follicle. And so for that reason, alpaca is really, really warm. Um, but it also does have a bit less crimp than all your sheep wools. Um, so it means that it's very kind of drapey and has a real heaviness to it. Um, we use 40% alpaca in Alpaca Supreme. And then the other thing that, the main thing we blend it with is 40% Merino. I know you saw Merino last time, but here it is again. So you can see, because I just showed you how easily that alpaca came off. Hopefully you can see the Merino. And if I pull at it, it comes off much slower and will kind of drag a little bit. So that means that our machines are much happier to spin this guy than they are pure alpaca. So we always do alpaca in like a blend with something else. Um, and then we get all of that soft and drapey and warm luxuriousness from the alpaca. But we've also got a little bit of that bouncy kind of woolly memory from the merino. Um, and then the last thing we blend it with, and this is the most lustrous of all, you can probably see just how shiny that is. So this is mulberry silk and we use 20% in our alpaca supreme and you can see just how long and fine and floaty those fibers are it's sort of wafting around like it's in a swimming pool or underwater or something it looks incredible and silk is not only is it really soft but it has a very long staple length and it's really strong so our alpaca supreme is like a really nice strong lustrous fiber so that is the composition and then we have spun our um our kind of previous weight 
the sport weight or it's also a heavy four ply. Um, that guy is 333 meters, very precise, um, per 100 gram, which is three nines. Is it Frankie? What is the oh, new gosh. metric? I'm not so good with new metric. I think it's 312. 312s, perfect. I think. No, 310s. 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 Perfect. <laughs> Got there in the end. Yeah. That does make sense because yeah. 10 divided by 3 yeah, yeah. is 3.3333. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Some simple maths <laughs> and we've got the answer. <laughs> um, so new metric for anyone who doesn't know, it's a more technical kind of way of counting or classifying a yarn. Um, instead of just saying what meterage is per 100 gram or gauge yeah. um, or what gauge it is, the reason people use new metric is because this as a three tens you then know that it's three strands of 10 It's how metrics. many goes into a kilometre. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and then you just take the zeros off the end. Um, well, then ha if you've got a three-fold, that's how many... So it, would, it thirds it, basically, yeah. which is how you end up with the metre per 100 grams, if you put it into 100 grams. Yeah. But the new metric's very popular with weavers as well. Yeah, it's um, more interdisciplinary. Yeah, it? yeah. Than just like knitting and crochet. Um, but the thing that's nice about a new metric is it'll tell you how many plies something is. So for instance, if I hop over here and show off our new, um, our new heavy lace, this one is 600 meters per 100 grams. But we thought it would be fun to make these little 50 gram mini skeins, so that's what we did. Then you can do stripes or, you know, play around with the colours a little bit more mm -hmm. without having to kind of commit yourself to a whole 100 gram skein. And these guys are two twelves. Yeah, so that's why you get the 600 per 100 grams. Exactly. So that is the two weights. And we'll show you a bit more of a close up and stuff of the... Um, of the new lace weight right now. I think Frank is going to go through all the colours. Yeah. And you designed all these beautiful colours. I Frankie, did. So I had a little blender thon. I will definitely come over and give you give you some stuff. Grand. Right. So we are back in the room and we are going to talk you through the um, revamped colour palette of the lovely, luxurious Alpaca Supreme. Um, so what I've done actually is brought over some of these tops as well because we thought as Sonia had taken you through the fiber content we can show you how the colors actually blend Beautiful. so this one is gorgeous this is Mr. Smoke so he was John and Juliet's late cat and he had this beautiful kind of grayish bluish whitish shiny lovely coat he was quite a ferocious little rescue though <laughs> <laughs> bless his soul he was he wasn't the friendliest of cats he, he was particular um, about what company he kept and it he? wasn't many people so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but bless him love him uh so he has joined as a permanent feature to both the sport four ply and to the lace weight Hurrah. so this is good exciting news because the top's been around for quite a while so it's very nice to bring him as a permanent addition um right so then we have also have lolite I look at that this one is a top yeah look at the swish on that it's beautiful you can really see all the different colors like the different kind of the alpaca purple. and merino and the silk yeah that's really beautiful uh and then we have as you write which is a lovely navy. So they say alpaca and silk isn't for beginner spinners, really. But I have I have uh, met a few adventurous souls who will try and do it. But that's fine. I don't think I could hand spin this yet. It's very slippery. It's really isn't slippy, it? yeah, and it's it goes gorgeous goes well. really fast. But it's just lovely how you can see all the the um, colours blend as you pull it out really nice 
lovely and finally this is um another one that's been around since the beginning is uh but renamed as quartz and that would have been light steel gray in its previous life so there's some of the tops uh the whole color palette does come in tops so they're just all on the website in um the alpaca supreme land when it came to creating some more colors because I really liked the old colour palette, um, but we wanted to get rid of some of the naturals to replace them with something a bit more fun. So because we had all of the anthracite and the steel greys, I thought it would be quite fun to keep it quite metallic still. Mm. So that's why they, we've named them after gems as well, um, is because that's it's a natural a natural occurring thing in the world. Uh, so this is anthracite and that is, um, uh, that has remained as anthracite. Beautiful. You can really see the shine on there as well. Yeah. So that's like a really nice dark. It's, it's black, it's like pitch black, but because of the silk, it's quite reflective, would you say? Yeah, definitely. And the yeah. alpaca and the merino have got a fair bit of shine. Yeah, too. definitely. Yeah. And then this is spinel, which is uh, the mid steel gray. Mm. And it's not like a warm gray, like the Exmoor's mm. Warp Balls. It's just a straight kind of... Quite icy. Yeah. And then this uh, is quartz, which was light steel grey. And with these light ones, you can see the uh, twofold definition in there. Yeah, beautiful. And how fine it is. And then this is the Mr. Smoke. So that's quite a bluey grey. Yeah, really bluey grey. Um, it's actually made out of like a lavender and denim color, but because it's gray alpaca, it really kind of cools it down. And you can see that all within the top as well. And then we move on to uh, the Azurite, which is a lovely, lovely navy blue. Been asking for a navy blue for years. I know. <laughs> I love a navy blue. Yeah. And that and Mr. Smoke are so nice together. They are, them, yeah. They? We can get a bit excited about colour combinations, I think. Uh, and the Lolite. That's the really fun purple. I just love how bananas it looks in the top. Yeah, gorgeous. And then this is a very classy Morganite which is a lovely dusky pink. It's not like a baby pink though, no. is it? It's more of like a pale rose or yeah, something. Yeah, like it a is. dirty dusky. Gorgeous. And kyanite, which is not, it's not a mossy, but it's maybe a bit more of an olivey green, mm -hmm. which is really nice too. And then we have the natural white as well, which is quite special. And that's just a pure white, isn't it? Yep, pure white. And I know some of um, some of our customers like to dye, so that oh, dyes yeah. are absolutely beautiful if you're a hand dyer. And it would be so fun because every single one of the fibres in the content would dye differently, so you'd get a really kind of fun Marley effect, I think. So here is one of our 100 gram skeins it looks so of the four ply. amongst all I those know. tiny ones. <laughs> the tiny baby 50 gram skeins these so are. So cute. Uh, so this is the lovely threefold Perfect. of the four ply sport weight. And you can see it's actually, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a plump four ply. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's nice, quite round, even. It gets really nice stitch definition as a three ply like that, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we decided to make the uh, lace a two ply, just because I think, is that quite traditional? Yeah. And uh, and because it's so fine, actually, our um, butler, the spinner that spins it, would struggle doing that as three ends. 
but that's nice. And um, when we show you the samples, we can show you in the fabric what the difference between the two and the threefold kind of uh, make it appear to. Yeah, for sure. Should we do that now then? Yeah, let's head over to the samples. So the first sample that we want to show you is this beautiful cowl. It's absolutely heavenly. And this was um, crocheted up for us by Faye Dash Bacuse. Hello, Faye, we love you. Um, resident crochet designer. <laughs> and um, it actually uses the new, um, the new lace weight as well. So, but it's just, it's so drapey. We've had it done in the natural color, the pearl. And it's so big, you can kind of wrap it around twice. Um, and this pattern is called Positivity Spiral, which is nice and it is a really ingenious pattern because the way it works is you can kind of use you can use any thickness you fancy and her pattern um works for everything from worsted down to lace weight um so this is the lace weight version and then here is the um sport weight version as well so you can see, and I'll do a close up in a little bit, but you can see that motif is kind of slightly larger, um, but it's the same lovely pattern. So that's the thing that's nice about it, is it's just a one skein project. You don't end up with any leftovers. You could just kind of crochet along until it's as big as you want Be or as small as you content. want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't need to worry about playing yarn chicken. So it's a really great pattern. It looks like it would be like quite nice TV crochet yeah. or just, you yeah. know, With nothing too stressful. Exactly. So this is the um, Morganite colour mm -hmm. and then the other one is Pearl. So I'll just give you a little close up. Beautiful. So here is Faye's Positivity Spiral in that gorgeous pearly and this is one of our um new lace weight samples and it's just it's like soft as a feather it is made with um two of the 50 gram skeins so it's a whole 100 grams but you can see just how much fabric mm, you, you get, get from that yeah yeah i love how dense but light that looks as well it's, it's lovely isn't it it looks like she's used quite a fine hook mm -hmm. on that one but yeah, it's just, and I think it would just get like more and more kind of delicate because all the halo, as it started softening over time, I think these little gaps would start getting a bit mm. filled in with that beautiful, crazy, crazy. it would be for sure. So that is the beautiful areas of cloud lace weight version. And then here we've also got this is the um, the sport weight version, and it's the same pattern, so you can really see just how those two patterns kind of have transitioned between the thicknesses. Nice. Um, so it's a clever pattern to pick up, really, because it's just a one skein project, and you can kind of whatever skein you've got kicking around yeah. in your stash, yeah, whip up a positivity spiral in it. We all need one of those. <laughs> Bit of positivity <laughs> is no bad thing, huh? But yeah, they're gorgeous. And even the, because um, of the, because actually this um, sport weight one's fairly dense as well, but because the yarn is so drapey, it just hangs beautifully. So yeah, Faye's done another good one there. Thanks, Faye. So I thought I would start off with actually showing you a whip that I've got on the needles at the moment. Uh, so when we finished our spin of the new lace weight, I was desperate to do something in it. So the uh, pattern that I'm uh, working on at the moment, which was my first ever published pattern. Was uh, it really? Yeah, oh my first my one. I think was that in Francesca Hughes history. <laughs> uh, in knitting magazine in Fe oh, April 2016 I think yes a little while ago so it was really really nice to be able to pick up the needles again and kind of refresh the pattern 
Uh, so I've done the center square and I've brought that along to show you. Don't you just love? It's beautiful. I love lace knitting. It's one of my ultimate favorite things to do. I don't know whether it's because it raises my blood pressure and like creates stress and you sat on the edge of your seat with your butt cheeks clenched. <laughs> It's because you're worried Please that you're going to drop go a stitch. Well. But I don't know why I really like that for some reason. Um, but actually, uh, all of the wrong side rows are pearl on this pattern, which makes it like you've got 50% breathing room. That's which good. Which is nice. That's good. Uh, and the center square is in Mr. Smoke. Beautiful. So it's lovely. And what pattern is that? Oh, it's Sweet Clementine by Brand. Mead. Um, my mill name is Frankie or Franks, you know, or the original Frankster, but <laughs> <laughs> my professional name is Francesca Hughes, so that's where you'll find my pattern. <laughs> Grand. And I think I dug out the original oh, first yeah. one you ever made, so. Yes. So this one is, will be, this one's the one you would have seen in the magazine. And this is in Alpaca 2 to 3 ply, yeah. isn't it? And, Which uh, is our other lace weight yarn. Yeah. And that's in the Clementine and the Natural Fawn. But the, you can see the drape. So quite similar yarns, really, because it's that alpaca that gives it that beautiful, swishy, swishy, hangy. It's lovely, the drape. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I will be coming over and giving you a little close up of these guys. Because obviously we are not filming this for Wonder World weekend. Yeah. There will hopefully, almost definitely, be uh, oh, yes. beautiful <laughs> photos on the website of your finished whip. Yeah. It will yeah. be a completed whip definitely. by that point. It will be. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to the long way round. I've got to go. Whoa. <laughs> I well, think, yeah. I know what you're doing in April. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a lot of lace knitting. And I will look forward to it. <laughs> Here is the sweet clementine middle square. Oh, I must first of all apologize for not sewing in my ends. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> Although to be fair, it's not finished. So I feel like that's a, you know, closing curtain thing is to tie in all your ends. So Yeah, tying in your ends. Cause I usually then, like if I'm picking up stitches, I'll yeah, usually like weave them into Exactly, the and then it. just snip them off when you get there. Yeah. It's fine, we're all human. <laughs> we are, all, we all have our flaws. <laughs> so here is a little close up of this lace. Like mm. I said, every wrong side um, row is just pearl. So that makes it kind of nice. I just, I like it because I find it quite in, intuitive where you can read what direction your stitches are gonna go in. I know that's like not an everybody thing, but Personally, that's one of the reasons I enjoy it. Yeah, it's like um, it's more like drawing almost than knitting sometimes, isn't yeah. it? A lace pattern. Yeah, being able to see where it goes. And you can see how lovely and heathery that Mr. Smoke colorway is there. It looks really accurate here, actually. It's like a real, you can see the blue tone in it. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I can't wait to share with you the uh, finished product when we get there. Uh, so we are going to whip you over to Daisy, who is in the mill just behind us, and she is going to introduce you to our lovely code winder, Gino. So here we are with Daisy. Hi. Hello, Daisy. And she is going to tell us about Gino. This is Gino. Gino is our newest, most technological, cleanest machine in the entire building. He is only, I believe, he's not even 10 years old. We Whoa. bought him new. He's a baby. He's a baby. So we have some machines in here that are uh, 1890, I believe. Gillian is 1890. And Gino isn't even 10 years old. And they're next to each other, funnily enough, which I quite like. Um, Gino is very fast because of this. Gino is incredibly quiet. He's so quiet, isn't we he? We like that. <laughs> the clattering, there's an element of kind of, I don't know, there's an element of nostalgia with the clattering, but the silence is also really nice, isn't it, Sonia? It's nice, it's very nice. And he's such a fetching shade of like grey and duck egg blue. I think that's my favourite thing about Gino. 
And then when all the cones, can you show us a cone? Because people might not know what those are. These so. come in all shapes, sizes, colors. Yeah. Different labels on the inside from all the other places that they've been. Sometimes they're really interesting. Sometimes they just say letters and words, which is what this one is. Well, not letters and words, but letters and numbers. I'm not going to read them out. That would be tedious, very <laughs> tedious. <laughs> but I love the way that all the different coloured cones look on Gino. It's always it's always good. It's we did we did thing. get some um, cones coming in recently, and Frankie and I opened up the box, and she was very dismayed by the fact that they were all red. <gasps> very dismayed. But these are all nice and colourful, so that's good. Um, now Gino was named, we believe. I'm trying to rack my memory. When he came into the mill, he was brand new, and the chap who helped us install him was from Italy, which is where Gino was from. And I think his name was Gino too, which is why he's called Gino. Hmm. But uh, John May proved this wrong. I can't remember. It was a long time ago for my mind. Now in my memory, he was quite small, very slender, dark hair, um, quite suave. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. We took him to the pub. It was a beautiful occasion. See, this is why you had to name the machine after him. Clearly, but we couple named nights after down he the left. pub with a smart, suave, a smart, suave, suave man, <laughs> suave fella. Because he's so new, there aren't any little things that he does that are quite fun. So when we talked about Boyd last time, mm -hmm. there were lots of little intricacies that were really fun uh, to fix and to deal with. But Gino has nothing wrong with him, he, because he's so new, so... He just behaves himself. He's just a shiny delight in, in uh, this mill of clankering rust heaps, which are wonderful. I love them. Yeah, and it's nice having the different options, isn't it? Is. It? It's it nice is. having a little bit of a new, a little bit of old. This, for everyone watching at home, that is all our cone stock back there. Look at those. Oh, Actually... Yeah. That's not all of it. That's, that's just, our library. That's just some of the library. It's wonderful. It's it's almost as satisfying as having the book spines with having all the numbers. Yeah. Looking at you. And they're all nicely organized. They are, they have to be. And if they're not, then hell hath no fury. That's yeah. all I can tell you. Yeah, yeah. and someone <laughs> gets in trouble if they're not organized. Well, they do. Not really, actually. I'm really bad at telling people off. Yeah. Anyway, let's set this up. <laughs> it's a lot like setting up a sewing machine. Firm. Threading. Threading. And why are you going around there? What is that about? This is called our tension wheel. And our tension wheel makes the tension, funnily enough, tighter or looser, ah. depending on the type of yarn. This is Exmoor Sock, it is robust. We can put it round quite a few times. If you've got something delicate, you put it round once. If you have something strong, you put it round lots. Mm. Okay, so we put it round the back, behind this little bar, pink bar, between the little pink hole there, which nice sounds like it could be that. rude. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta make sure it's back in. And then you go through these little scissors, which are kind of like a, Every time something thick comes through, like a little slubby slub, it will break it off. Oh, so that cuts the slubs. Well, it doesn't necessarily up. cut. What it does is it just kind of detects it and it doesn't, it can't cut it. It's not strong enough, but it will kind of break it somehow. Ah, okay. Um, and then this, you can put a little bit of waxy wax on and slip it back. And that's for our alpaca bed sock, which we don't really do anymore. Um, then through but the some iron. people we spin for want their um, want their yarn back waxed, don't they? Or yeah. sometimes weavers will want it waxed. That's true. That is true. So we put the wax here, and then it spins it round. It waxes the yarn as it goes through. We don't use that very often, but we are always capable of doing so. And then through the top, and then behind the bar, and then we'll just zoom out. And this is where the cone comes into play. Little cone. Put little little uh, rabbit down the hole, almost. <laughs> Very strange uh, analogy. <laughs> and then you pop it on and you... Great. And there we go. So he is very fast. He is. And Sonia, have you noticed we can talk to each other whilst he's running? I know, it's a miracle, <laughs> isn't it? 
It really is. We're not shouting. No, I know. This is one of the only machines that I have ever been allowed to operate as well. So I quite like Juno for that reason. And you can see he's got this start and stop button. So if you press the stop, he stops. How about that? Technological marvel. And then he's got, he's quite long. So he goes all the way down there and then all the way up there. But actually we are now thinking that maybe Gino could be even longer and maybe he needs a little extra addition. And then he's got a little display panel over here. And then that's how you turn him on and off. Bye folks, it was lovely talking to you. Farewell, thank you, Daisy. So now we're gonna go over to Astrid and she has designed a gorgeous cardigan. It's so flowy and it's got this little delicate lace detail on the collar. Mm, it's lace. nice, it's really nice. And she's done it in the gray, so it's just, oh, it's lovely. Um, she lives in Germany, so rather than her posting us the sample such a long way, um, she has actually recorded it herself. Uh, you might recognise her from a previous vlog. She also popped up in our Yana Delic vlog. Um, she is a all round lovely, lovely lady. And um, yeah, she's going to talk to you about her cardigan Eleganta. Hello, my name is Astrid and I am Knit for Passion. Today I want to show you my cardigan Eleganza. Elegancia is knitted in a wonderful yarn Alpaca Supreme from John Urban Textiles and is constructed top down. The yoki is decorated with an easy lace pattern that underlines the splendid quality of the yarn. Beneath the yoki it's keep plain and knitted flat. The sweater uses a wraparound eye cord to finish off the edges. With eight beautiful buttons, the cardigan can be closed. Elegancia is a relaxed, lightweight cardigan that can't be worn at all occasions. So our next pattern is by Emily Foden, who is an amazing artist. Um, she is back in Canada now and she's a hand dyer. She dyes under Viola Yarns, but she once upon a time, many moons ago, um, came to work at the mill. Um, when was that, Frankie? Before my time. Uh, yeah, that was, I think, 2012, 13. Okay. So yeah, yeah a while yeah. ago now. A while ago. Yeah. And so while she was here, um, she was a massive fan of the old Supreme as well rightly so and she designed this beautiful shawl um, it's a sort of a take on a traditional hat shawl um, and it's called stars in your eyes stars in the sky <laughs> and it is in the gradient of the dark naturals so obviously it's that beautiful anthracite black and then the two paler ones and then just on the tippy edge just on the tippy edge, it's the white. And this is the small version. Um, and it's really nice and cozy, but you can't quite, because it's a um, square shawl, you can't quite get it over twice. So we thought it would be nice to make a larger version. So I'll show you that as well. So this is the large and it is just beautiful Gigantic. and vast. And that's also, it's all in one color, except for just that little pico edging there, just to give it like a slight pop. Um, and I'll just pop that on. And this is in the sport weight. Yes, they're both in the sport weight. And it is just, it's gorgeous. It's so soft. It's almost like a blanket, the large one. It's just I like it in the pure solid color. luxury. It's nice. You really see the stitch definition popping, don't you? Mm, yeah. And this is all in Lolite, but you could, of course, if you're not a pink, a purple person, you could use any color. Um, and yeah, it's a square shawl. 
So look at that. <laughs> Taking up the whole screen. Just divine. I might have to go home with it now, just <laughs> put it on my bed. It's amazing. <laughs> this sample only arrived a couple days ago. So this is the first time I'm kind of having a proper squish on it. And core blimey, is it gorgeous. Denise is our sample, one of our sample makers. Yeah, shout and out she to has Denise. done an amazing job. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'll give you a little close up and you can see all those gorgeous, even stitches of hers now. So, this is the large version, which I'm going to steal and take yeah, home. <laughs> That'll be in my car after today, coming home with me, um, of uh, Emily's Stars in the Sky shawl. And now we've got a bit of a close up. You can really see that gorgeous edging. It's called a star stitch, and you can see that um, it's one every maybe four rows, it looks mm -hmm. like, yeah. at the beginning of the border. And then for the last little bit, it looks like maybe even every That's every other year row. Come out. Exactly. Oh, As the sun goes oh. down. And then it's just got that beautiful little Pico edging. Which is just divine. And then I even like, she's incorporated that star motif just into the middle panel as well. Mm -hmm. Which should keep your brain ticking along nicely, I yeah. think. Rather than just doing like plain sailing stocking stitch. Yeah, that big centre. There's just these little pearl bumps in there. Of course, if you don't want your brain to tick, I'm sure you could also just like nix the little polka dot texture. And just... Um, Go for plain stocking stitch, but that little detail is really nice. Yeah, and it lovely. is just absolutely massive. So there's a close up beautiful. of the other star stitch border. Again, the stitch definition is incredible. It's beautiful. And I actually, um, I'm not sure how well it's showing up on the camera, but you can really see all of the different colors yeah, in can. that purple there, can't you? It's like a really rich kind of a color. It's it got is. a real tweeded vibe. And then here is the same one in the other color combo. So that is the uh, smaller version. But as you can see, it's still a really nice, generous size. And that is all of the grays. So it's the anthracite, the darkest one. And then it's spinel which is the medium gray and then quartz. quartz and then a little pop of pearl on the edge there. Yeah, that's lovely. So what you could do is maybe do this and then maybe um, make a little smaller because you will obviously end up with quite a lot of pearl left over. Mm. Although I think I remember there's a surprisingly not actually by the time you is go Is there not really? Because it's quite large, but yeah, you, you could do a tassel. You could do little tassels on the yeah. edges. Oh my God. Every scrap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could do a little tassel. I think this would be really nice in um, in like some of the dyed shades as well, mm -hmm. if you don't fancy that natural gradient. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's lots of color combo options. But yeah, there Beautiful. it is. Stars in the sky. Gorgeous. Next up, I thought I'd bring my pal Susie Q over to show you one of my jumpers. So this is Lemel, and uh, this version utilizes the sport weight as well. And it's in the old colors, which was the browns and the fawns as well. But I am imagining all of the color combos that we could make in the new colours. Oh my god, what would you do? Well, I've already thought about it, obviously. Um, so I keep the anthracite where it was because I think that's really strong. Mm. Um, and I'd keep the uh, light silver, which is the light steel, which is um, quartz. And then I think I'd have to go Mr. Smoke and the azurite. Oh, the two blues. Yeah. Yeah, yummy. I think that would work really cool together. And then also, I think I'd have to put bobbles on every single of the anthracite stripes because when we do the close-up, I'll show you there's bobbles on the hem of this lemel and I'm just thinking on every stripe. Bobble would be, tastic. Would be bananas fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, this uh, pattern was originally in Pom Pom magazine in 
2016 as well, I think, one of my earlier designs. And it's just so warm. I just love the tight um, roll neck, which I'm a big fan of. I know quite a lot of people aren't into tight neck things, but I think that's quite yeah. easily adaptable. You just stop. Don't, just don't do the neck. Stop after yeah. your inch. I love it, a turtleneck. I yeah. always call it a turtleneck. Did you just call it a roll neck? Roll neck. neck. Oh. It's a turtle American. Maybe. Maybe. I've well, I think they're one Americanisms. and the same. And I think yeah. some people will even call them polo, but I think of polo as in polo shirts, like yeah. Fred Perry polo yeah. shirt. Oh, I always thought that was polar, like a polar bear, <laughs> but maybe that was just me mishearing. Huh. I think we need to go and do some Googling. <laughs> like the Arctic, like yeah. that's what people would wear when it was cold. they were cold and they had to turn the, the collars up. <laughs> yeah, clearly. We, we're not sure, but it's very nice addition to that sweater. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and so the main fabric is made of uh, pu a very puckered... Uh, fabric so basically you're doubling the stitches and then decreasing the stitches on every colored stripe and then using a smaller needle actually as well um, which sounds like a faff but because it's only in stocking stitches like the faff is within the changing of things rather than in the actual fabric and I think it creates such a cool it is nice. It's really nice. It's just such a cool fabric. I think it's lovely, it's and it's a just garment. So it does warm. look like a lot of a lot of old knitting on there, though, Frankie. Yeah, there is quite a lot of knitting. I I do quite a lot of knitting, luckily. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I will bring her over to the table, and we can have a little closer look. Beauty. So here we have the Lemel jumper, which I just wanted to show you in a bit more detail, this really fun stitch pattern we've got. Look, can you see it? It's like concertinaing under pressure. Amazing. Um, so I've got the bobbles on the hem. Nice. Which, as a bobble fanatic, I'd put everywhere. Bobbles are having a bit of a time at the moment, yeah, aren't they? They're I have sneaking noticed. back in, I think. Yeah, yeah. but um, they do take quite a lot of yarn and quite a lot of time and effort, so... <laughs> got to be a committed bobble lover but I do think it'd be easy to become one <laughs> uh, so you can see the differences in the gauge of the anthracite rose and of the other colored rose yeah, with beautiful. the different needle size and with the doubling and the decreasing of the stitches and I just you could even do it in plain like just one other alternate colour, so it was just quite a basic stripey jumper. You obviously don't have to use all of the different colours, but that would be fun. Or even just one colour. That would be nice too. Yeah, lovely. So plump. So I know I've already shown you this one, but it's my new favourite baby because um, it's my newest design. So hopefully you'll bear with me while I show it to you too, again. Um, and this is the Perkira shawl. Thank you to um, whoever commented on our last vlog saying actually it's pronounced Perkira and I was calling it Pachira. Um, it's named after a plant and so it's Latin and uh, hence no cha. So there's a fun fact for you. No chas, if it's a Latin word. <laughs> I did um, history of art at university, so um, not very much Latin pronunciation going on in my life. Um, but yeah, here it is. It's all gorgeous, cabled, beautifulness. And whoo, there it goes, it goes sailing off. And I've actually been wearing this at least once a week um, ever since it sort of came off the ne needles and it is starting to just kind of halo and fluff slightly as you'll see when I do a close-up in a mo but it's still just the stitch definitions really crisp and it's just beautiful um, and actually the way that I've kind of been wearing it most is because it has been a bit chilly still is just like all wrapped up oh lovely like a little cowl you can just like then tie the two ends together and then you've got all that like gorgeous cozy alpaca fiber just snuggled right up around your neck 
I think that's the thing is like some of our yarns I wouldn't necessarily want to put like right up close to you know one of those most sensitive bits but the Supreme is definitely like luxuriously soft and floaty um yeah so I'll give you a little close-up and show you the construction of that guy now so I just want to show you, um, this is my Pachira and the construction is a little bit, um, I like to say interesting and fun, yeah, but um, it. it can be a bit complex. So I'll just kind of talk you through it all. And the reason I went for a construction like this is because I really, I had the idea of like doing a shawl with cables on it first. And um, I just love the way that they're all in that like V shape. I think it's really yeah, I like love, there's so many lines coming in all different angles. Exactly. And then some of them are like reverse stocking stitch and some of them are garter. Yeah, so I really wanted that like dynamic kind of feel to it. And you can see there's this central spine here where all the decreases happen. So if we just follow that through, doo -doo -doo, here's the beginning. So again, you start with just like a really small amount of stitches and then the way that this shawl is knitted and the way that all these ca cables end up on such a slant like that is because you're always knitting on the bias. So with every right side row, what you do is you're casting on two stitches on this side and two stitches on that side, so four in total. And then in the middle, you're actually decreasing Amazing. two stitches. So each row is like two stitches bigger than the previous row, mm -hmm. but you're casting on four and then decreasing two here. Super cool. So then you end up, you can really tell on the stripey bits, you end up with the rows kind of facing that way. And that just really enhances like that lovely kind of alpaca supreme drape. Yeah, um, the stitch definition looks incredible. It's beautiful, well. isn't it? And I've actually, I have worn this a lot because um, there were two samples. I just sometimes you make something and you're like, I can't, I can't, I can't have it just live in a sad plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one I've really been wearing a lot. Um, but yeah, it's holding up really well. It is, you can see maybe here, there's like a little bit of... Um, gentle kind of softening mm -hmm. but i mean that just adds to it, it i does. think and nothing that can't be taken care of no for sure um so then the way the construction works is you will kind of add you can see you add the cables there's some charts so they become incorporated into those ones you add and then they just neatly get decreased and then once you're about here you can see what you do is on this side, instead of increasing two stitches, you start just increasing one stitch. So then that means that once you get to this point, your stitch count stays exactly the same. And then you're actually just, in effect, the spine starts shifting over to so one clever. side. And then um, you end up with a really nice kind of long bit over here that you can wrap around your neck. So you end up with this really nice kind of triangle shape. Um, and Love the that. cast off is all along Make up sure here. Tail end and well. I quite like, I added in a couple more stripes at the end just so you can really see how that like construction works. But so that's another thing that's quite nice about this shawl is although it's so big, Actually, you get to a point where just when the rows are starting to get like so big that it's becoming a bit annoying, <laughs> mm -hmm. they then don't grow any bigger. Um, and then you're kind of on your way to the end. Exactly. Then. Yeah. Home stretch. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always helpful with We've knitting. All been there. I'm much better at um, starting things than I am finishing yes. them sometimes. Yeah. Grand. So yeah, that's another look at um, Pakira. Beautiful. Uh, so here I have. Uh, another shawl uh, again designed by me and it is called plus copper and this is in the sport weight so it's really nice and warm and thick enough and like Sonia has said you can do the wrapping around the neck which is just so lovely so lovely like this 
Um, and it's a triangle shape. So the shaping of the shawl is quite nice and simple because you're only increasing um, on the spine down there and the border here. And then it does have a double sided lace pattern. So the lace is a, a tad challenging, but uh, it's quite a nice piece if you're up to the challenge. Uh, I've also just updated the pattern as well which will give you more help in how to incorporate the lace repeats as you go. So that should be more helpful. Uh, it comes in two sizes. So this is the larger size, and then there's a smaller size, which is just a couple of repeats smaller. But then what I did with the leftover yarn, because we always hate waste yarn, yeah. is made loads of little tassels. Oh, that's cute. And just put them all along. It was really cute. I love a tassel. Yeah. I think I've left it at my parents though in, you know, COVID, so I haven't been able to get it back sadly. Mm. But One in the day, interim it's waiting for you. I know, Beth. the little tassels. <laughs> I've just whipped up another sample as well for fun. And uh I've again using up my scraps of all of these leftover Alpaca Supreme little balls I had hanging around. And I think the stripe looks really fun. It is fun. That's a great idea. Yeah. And again, that's in the sport weight. I wonder what it would be like in the laced weight. We should find out. Making so many projects for yeah. ourselves, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. So the lace weight has only been spun like a couple weeks after recording this. Yeah. So we haven't had much time to whip up lace weight samples. No. But they are on their way. They will come. Yeah, very excited. <laughs> uh, again, we'll take you over to the table and I can show you about this lace stitch in a bit more detail. So here we have the uh, plus copper, which we want to look in a bit more detail at. Uh, so you can see the lovely lace pattern, um, which, so you start here with a little garter tab cast on. Oh, just at the top there. Yeah, so just here with literally three stitches mm. and then you're working your way out. So like I said, there is a little chart in the um, new pattern which will help you increase. So you only start increasing when you've got enough stitches to do half of this repeat. So then you, because otherwise you'll end, it'd be quite hard to keep track of, I think. Um, so when you've got enough stitches and then you're increasing on your center spine and you're increasing here. And I just love it in this colour. I've always been told you should never knit lace or cables in dark colours, but I can't stop. <laughs> so I think it's fab. I think you can still see through it enough yeah, and you it can... it's beautiful. It's got a real art deco feel to yeah. it, I think, this lace pattern. Yeah, and you can definitely still see enough of the texture in this colour as well because of that lovely shimmering reflect yeah, reflective light. For sure. Can you give us a little cheeky close up of oh, that yeah. stitch pattern? There you go. Beautiful. And uh, the shawl only takes two skeins for both sizes. Gorgeous. There you go. So this is Faye's second um, pattern in the Alpaca Supreme. We're having a bit of a Faye Dashba Hughes love-in today. No bad thing. <laughs> um, and this is a pattern she created for our annual um, number two, which is the one where we went to the seaside, Aww. isn't it, Frankie? Yeah, that makes it sound so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> seaside in January. Yeah. Was it like the first week back after it was, Christmas or it was something? The coldest I've ever been. It was a chilly time. Yeah. But the photos <laughs> are beautiful are and you so look amazing beautiful. in this gorgeous sample. Very worth it. Yeah, definitely. So again, because it's fake. This is a beautiful crochet number. And I really like the kind of geometric nature of it. It's really, really beautiful. And then it's got um, got a bit of a gradient going on as well, obviously. But I think it would look really nice. You could do like, um, you could do those three, or you could do like Mr. Smoke and the blue. So you wouldn't necessarily, or you could just abandon the gradient concept 
completely and go for, you know, Solid. just like some fun color blocking. Um, I think it would be amazing to see like um, a version of this in the lace weight yeah. too. It would be like Dreamy. really light and airy, wouldn't it? On a loose gauge. Yeah, exactly. Like. Come on, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's an infinity cowl. So it sits nicely when it loops around your neck a couple of times. It's called Broad Oak Hill. Um, yeah, it's just divine. I think it's really, in these greys, it's a really classy mm -hmm. kind of an affair, isn't it? So we'll give you a little close up of that now. So this is Faye's lovely Broad Oak Hill. You can see it's an infinity cow with a bit of a twist in it, which means it's kind of a nightmare to fold when it's not being worn. You're always sort of not quite sure what to do with that bit. Um, but the thing that matters is it means it'll sit really beautifully when it is being worn because um, you kind of untwist it while you're wrapping it around your head. So it'll loop really gorgeously. Um, yeah, and then I think this is the wrong way round, mm -hmm. but actually I think that's quite like nice and graphic as well. So Faye's yeah, cleverly. The stitch pattern's so 3D, isn't it? It really is. I mean, that's one of the beauties of crochet, isn't it? Like, I don't know you could get something that yeah. textural with, with knitting. knitting. Potentially. Um, so that's really nice. Like, I always love it um, when the wrong side and the right side are both like, equally beautiful because yeah, let's be honest we're not all like putting our shawls on in the mirror and mm -hmm. like perfectly arranging them every time sometimes you're just throwing it on and going about your day um yeah and then you can if i do a little close-up yeah lovely you can really see that like graphic it's amazing, isn't and it? I am not much of a crocheter, but from my understanding of talking to Faye, I think she's achieved that by like sometimes crocheting into the front of the stitch, and sometimes into the back. Yeah, like I'm not, a, I'm not a super crocheter so either. I think it's the crochet of equivalent of like um, twisted rib. Oh yes, something like that. Yeah. So I'm sure there'll be many crocheters yeah. watching. Tell yeah. us if I'm Please talking do. absolute nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I do do a bit of crochet, but you know. I can do a granny square for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's about the extent of it, really. Yeah. A bit of double crochet, some shell stitch. That's mm. about me. <laughs> but this is gorgeous. And actually, trying this on again, it makes me think that I need to get that little hook or dust it off. So there we are. Uh, thank you so much for coming on our Alpaca Supreme adventure with us today. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed it. We've gone through all of the weights, Everything. the new colours, all of these lovely samples. Oh and yeah, the fibre even. So it has been, it's been a little journey. Yeah, been everywhere <laughs> today, haven't we? Well, we hope you've really enjoyed it and that that was an in-depth look enough because obviously we're all sad that we can't go to shows yeah. um so it's really nice for us to be able to share stuff with you virtually at the moment it's lovely so it is wonder wall weekend and we will come on more to wonder wall in mere moments we've got some tops to show you and um, but because it's wonder wall weekend we've got a cheeky little 10 percent discount Ooh. I know, not a bad thing. We don't do many sales, so no, it's quite no. a special scenario to have a sale from us. <laughs> we only manage about one a year. Yeah. Um, so everything is 10% off uh, for the weekend, and there will be a little code in the show notes. So if you just kind of look at all that text under wherever you're watching this, um, yeah, there'll be a little discount code in there for the Wonder Wall weekend. If you're watching this after Wonder Wall weekend, I am afraid there is no discount. I apologize. <laughs> oh, we hope you've liked it anyway. <laughs> but we do have lots of lovely yarns still. And um, you know, I think it's a fair price as it is. All of the patterns we've shared with you today will be available as kits on the website. Yeah. So we're gonna have some fun and create some color combos, I think. Yeah. And the kits, it's just handy having a kit because you don't have to worry about yeah, exact definitely. quantities of yarn. And you get your little project bag. Yeah, and then it's, it. and they also they make really nice gifts. 
they do either for yourself or yeah. for someone else that's a great idea but it's just nice to like know it's all in there yeah you've definitely got the right yarn yeah you don't need to stress about it it's a good thing um and then the other thing actually that we should mention oh. is that um because this is coming out uh, at the end of april and so mere days from when this video comes out and um, Lane magazine, Liner, Lena, Liner, Lane, uh, yeah, Liner. I'm not sure. I say Lane, but I <laughs> feel like it could be Liner. I think, I think it maybe is Liner. But we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Those lovely, they're Nordic, Nordic knitwear magazine, who uh, no doubt most of you have heard of. Their next issue is dropping, um, and we are super excited to say that there is going to be a pattern in um, the lovely green, which is kyanite, mm -hmm. uh, designed by Natalia, who is, yeah, she's fab. Yeah, she she's was, got so many I know. patterns in the world. They're so beautiful. Yeah, they're really lovely. Yeah, she's like riffing on this, like it's, it's um, this yarn combined with some mohair and then Ooh. it's like a kind of mosaic slip stitch thing. Wow. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that sounds I think amazing. The pattern previews go up in a couple of days, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah, but, I certainly oh will. Oh boy, be. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. And then I think she's made another one for herself in the anthracite oh. as well. So that's her favorite color. Yes. Good <laughs> color. Yeah, so that's coming out soon. What have you been listening to recently, Frankie? Yeah. What's been good for you? What's been working for me? Well, so at the mill, working full time, obviously I get a lot of time, I suppose, to myself because the machines are so loud. So I've been really missing reading books. So I've started listening, like I'm just eating books at the moment. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> thing about ears. having like a physical job is yeah. you get to just oh, it's spend all day in a world. Yeah. So the book I'm reading at the moment is called, which I would recommend definitely, is called The Mountain Sing. And unfortunately, I'm not going to try and pronounce the author's name because I will get it wrong and it will be terrible. Um, but look it up. Uh, it's about the Vietnamese war and it's really interesting. Uh, and actually, that was a recommendation from somebody I follow on Instagram, mm -hmm. who I would also recommend you follow, called The Bright Blooms. She's amazing. She's like a oh, sewing so inspir oh. inspiration yeah. person. So, got such a good eye for colour. Oh god, it's amazing. So that is my recommendation for this one. Correct. What about you? Um, so I um, do lots of typing at my job, so I don't get to listen to. Yeah, I don't get to listen to many audiobooks and podcasts and things because otherwise I'd start just like yeah, off on a little tangent <laughs> and someone would get you know <laughs> whatever story mm -hmm. in half an email. Um, I do listen to lots of um, audiobooks and podcasts while I'm knitting though, after work is over. <laughs> um, and I haven't quite got round to reading it yet, but one of my new authors has just released a new book. So all his books are amazing, so I'm sure this one will be too. Um, it's Kazuo Ishiguro, who is um, like half Japanese and half British. And he wrote Remains of the Day. Ooh, have you have read that, that or seen my... the book? No, I haven't. I'll oh, have to add it to my list. It's very good. And then the other thing that, um, like, what I've been kind of listening to whilst I work is I've gone on a kind of like Motown and soul <laughs> odyssey nice. recently. That just because it's nice to have a little dance, yeah. you know? Get up like, your chair once in a exactly. while. Exactly. <laughs> like have a little bop on the way to the kettle while you're making tea. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been listening to lots of Marvin Gaye and then I actually recently found um, like a more contemporary artist uh, called Curtis Harding. And his most recent album came out in 2017, so it's like new, new by Motown standards. Um, but it's just got so the it's... real same like feel. Um, so I would say if you like a bit of R and B or Motown or soul, I cannot wait to go dancing. Check out Curtis Harding. Uh, if you guys at home have any recommendations for us, like I said, my list is getting this long for my reading and I'm happy for more. <laughs> yeah, we're always happy to kind of hear new recommendations and things. So maybe pop something um, just in the comments. 
and then yeah yeah sounds we'll good we'll have a little look and now i think before we wave adieu um as it's wonder war weekend uh we have put our apple door top specials are on sale just for this weekend Ooh. so we're going to give you a little preview of those now uh, they're a little bit more rustic than the Supreme, but equally... Quite a lot more rustic, but yeah. so, so beautiful <laughs> exactly. and charming. Exactly. They've like got their own completely different special way. thing going on. They are just everything that encapul encapsulates the beauty of British wool. So 100%. we want to show you them. And even if you're not a Topps fan, it's worth sticking around because um, this is going to be our next big yarn launch. Is that an announcement? It is, I think. Yeah. We've been <laughs> dropping little sneaky, sneaky hints. Um, but for our virtual open weekend, which is the early June, the 4th to the 6th, is our virtual open weekend. And that is when this Apple Door will launch his yarn oh. as well. Um, Frankie and I have been knitting with it because yeah, we're getting oh my goodness. we're designing lots of patterns and core cool, blimey it's incredible I love it it's, it's just yeah it, it's so different I really love how different it is to every, anything else we do yeah and um, but we'll save all the juicy gloss for another exactly time. and we will do like a dedicated Apple Door episode so we're not going to get too carried away with ourselves and still Supreme's yeah, like yeah. <laughs> limelight. But I think that's one of the things that's so special about working at a mill is like you've got these amazing machines and they do so many different things. Mm, yeah, very and new. We really try with all of our ranges to have like a little bit of everything. Yeah. So yeah. This one's got definitely got all of the colour things. <laughs> I got a bit carried away with the colours. Um but yeah. So we will go and grab those and um, see you in a moment. See you in a moment. So these are all of our um, Apple Door tops that we have blended for Wonderwall um, this weekend. And they all usually, they live on the secret mill member pages. But for Wonderwall weekend, we thought we would turn them on and um, yeah show share all the give delights with you give everyone a go on them and this is only about half of the eventual color palette when it launches properly there will be 20 colors in both tops and yarn but these are just some of the ones we've kind of been experimenting with blending up first i thought it might be fun to kind of show them off to you uh, so here we go this one is the first one and this is sweet copping sweet copping Coppin. they're all named after um apples so some of them have got some quite fabulous puntastic do, names yeah. we love a good pun here at the mill and this is like a hot pink with a nice fawn brown and then a little bit of green running yeah, through it um, and we tried with all these Apple Doors shades to um, create like a really sort of heathered, lovely heathered colour palette. So depending on whether you spin um, like this way, oh, yes, which I can't remember the name. I can't remember the technical name, but you can either spin this way mm -hmm. and then you get quite a blended shade, mm -hmm. as you can see. Or you can spin from what is called the fold, mm -hmm. I know, which is where you sort of fold it over like that and you spin the colours in this direction. Yeah, that's fun. And then you get more of like a stripe. I am not a hand spinner, but that is my understanding of how... Um, so if you spin from the fold, you can see there... There's like a stripe like a of blue isn't it? and then a little kind of white section and a brown section. So I think depending on whether you want to kind of have a more stripey effect or a more solid color. I mean, that is the magic of spinning, isn't yeah, it? Definitely. Is you can really control, control exactly what you get at the end. So this beautiful colour here is maybe one of my favourites. It spins up as like a really nice kind of warm, um, kind of grey, yeah, blue like a, shade. It's like a warm mint. Almost, yeah, isn't it? exactly. And that is called Winter Stubbard. 
and Beautiful. then here is probably the most popular one this one's With pretty members, yeah. incred and that is called dufflin and it's just like every color under the sun it's like a proper rainbow there is some um pink and yellow and blue and then just a little bit of that fawn in there and once it's spun up um it kind of looks like an oil slick or something oh, it's yeah. really not the oil slicks are good but they are beautiful they colors are so beautiful. <laughs> that is probably the only good <laughs> thing about them yeah and then here we have sheep's nose which, which is the cutest name i know those little sheep it makes me feel like they're all cold oh, though, no, no. with their blue noses um and that's a really nice it's like just an off white with that little bit of turquoise flash then what else have we got the other pale color is here and this one's got a fun name it's called wimple wonder and this will spin up as like a pale fawn mm, yeah, so that exactly. yellow looks really punchy here but once it's spun it'll really kind of just gentle down um and then we've got this is spicy pippin and that is actually um our virtual mill open weekend special from last year katie green's mossy bog I which some of you might remember bog. and so because it's a purely apple themed range apple door and um, we've just na renamed mossy bog spicy pippin but I think that name kind of suits that yeah, great. intense colour. And then Spicy Pippin's friend is this guy. And that is called um, Golden Knob. <laughs> As I said, we like a pun. That's quite... Um, extreme. It's pretty like, in your face. Truthy, yellowy, bright, 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 isn't it? It really is. It's a high vis color. You're a quite high -vis right. Golden knob. And then this, <laughs> this is another quite high visy color, and it spins up as a real like kind of orange, pink sort of coral shade. Yeah. It's another one of my favorites. Quite intensely flecky coral. Isn't it, it is. It's amazing. Yeah. And this one is called Pig Snout. Which is also adorable. I know. We went on a real nose theme. I guess, actually, we were just picking from a list of apples. Yeah. So it's just whatever Some people... Some bananas people make these things up. <laughs> exactly. They're all, um like, apple varieties or cultivars that are, like, um native to the West Country. Yeah. So that's what, you know... Kind of, and I think most of them were made during like the Victorian kind of times, they early Victorian. So they were clearly into into pig snouts and all sorts. All sorts. <laughs> this one here is another kind of crazy rainbow one. This is Slack McGirdle, <laughs> which is sort of like the pink version of Dufflin. Um which you saw earlier in that it again is like you know quite literally a rainbow of multicolored deliciousness mm -hmm. there's a little bit of everything in there and then we've got some more chill colors uh, this one's tom putt and this just spins up as a really nice kind of teal lovely yeah, you've got to love a good, like a good teal is just, you know, it's classic. Everyone likes it. And then here is um, Fox Whelp. Almost forgot then. And then I was like, no, it's I do there. know the answer. <laughs> it's Fox Whelp. <laughs> That's the trouble with new ranges. It like Especially takes a little bit of time. The to... name does not color colorate. Color to the colour, correlate to the colour at all, yeah, yeah, apart yeah. from Golden Knob. Yeah. Um, the others is quite a guessing game <laughs> to think begin with. Fox Whelp does work. This is like a brown when it's spun yeah. up, like a little baby fox. That's true. Yeah. A tiny baby it's fox under a tree. very cute again, little baby fox. Um, and then what have we got next? So this is Hangy Down, which is another great apple name. That's my without least a favorite. doubt. It makes me feel weird. 
<laughs> well, that's what apples do on a tree, though, it's, isn't it? They're factual. all hanging downs. Um, so, yeah, that will spin up as a really nice kind of dark green. And then last but not least, we've got like a paler kind of sagey green. Um, and that one's lovely as well. That is Billy Down Pippin. Oh, yeah, that one's great. Which is a really cute name again. It makes me think of goats, I think. Oh, Just because everything lovely. Billy makes me think of yeah, goats. True, true. I'm a goat fan. Billy Goats Gruff. And that's a really nice sagey green. So yeah, these are just a little selection of our apple doors. And um, we've started planning for our open weekend. We're very excited. Of course we are. It's our biggest thing that we do. And it's all virtual. We really hope you'll join us. We'll be talking a lot about it over the next oh, yes. couple of um, couple of weeks, just because we can't help ourselves. Um, but the yarn will come out and the full tops range will come out as part of the open weekend. But you're getting a little sneaky preview of it mm -hmm. right now. Hope you enjoyed looking through all those apple door tops with us. Um, it is a blend of 40% Devon close wool. Yum. Which is quite a hardy, it's quite hill on the sheep. Coarser end, isn't yeah. it? But, but it's also, it's really sturdy and it's just so warm. And then there's also 40% Romney, which is a luster breed. Mm, gorgeous. And they've got a really nice crimp and it's quite a sheen to it, that fibre. And then the old trusty Exmoor blue face oh, yes. that we like to put into everything. Well, it is a nice thing. <laughs> that <laughs> definitely will add the softness, I think. Yeah. But it's going to be like such a hard wearing yarn, I oh, think. Oh, God. Yeah. Really excited. Definitely. And it's just got a real like traditional kind of heirloom feel to it. Mm. Um, it reminds me, there is no Shetland in there, but it reminds me a bit of like a Shetland yarn. Yeah. In terms I've of the handle. Been knitting with it. I feel like it's quite ropey. I don't know whether that's a compliment, but I love that feel about it. I love it. Yeah. It yeah. just feels like. Um, it feels like something that people would have been knitting with hundreds of years ago, you know? It feels like a real traditional British yeah. Yeah. sort of a wool. Like, it's a real rugged wool. It's not making any kind of excuses or apologies. Definitely, and that is why we love it so. We do. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's going to be a DK. Um, and, yeah, we will tell you more about it soon. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed episode four. Um, thank you also for all your lovely comments and encouragement. Um, we're sticking with it, the vlog, so <laughs> we're definitely glad that you guys have enjoyed watching it. And um, yeah, thanks thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Perfect. Nice to see you. Bye.